Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Again, Alejo Torres with the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago. Uh, here with Shayla Murray, who is going to help me uh, with the chat section of the web, uh, webinar. Uh, but uh, just want to say uh, welcome back. I know we've had, it's been three months since Money Smart Week. I can't believe it's uh, uh, been. Uh, but uh, we've already are starting to think about 2017. So I thought we'd check in with you to uh, show you our national results as well as talk a little bit about uh, a sneak peek for 2017. So uh, again, thanks for taking the time. Uh, we had, uh, looks like we have about uh, 30 or so folks uh, on this webinar. We had about 50, 50 this morning. So uh, again, thanks for taking the time. I anticipate the presentation to be about 30 minutes or so, and then we will certainly open up for question and answer at the end like we usually do. Uh, but uh, if there are any questions during, do not hesitate to, again, use the chat in the lower left. Uh, Shayla will be uh, trying to answer those questions as best she can as we go along. And, of course, any of that she can't answer or if there's any additional, we'll save that for the end. So, um, again, this is going to be a, a high-level look uh, at Money Smart Week, but uh, our events uh, were about a few hundred more than last year as well as our partner. Registered partners were a few hundred more than last year. Uh, participants were a little bit down. It's about 10,000 less than last year, but still a very strong number. Uh, we've seen some fluctuation in some states. Uh, Illinois, Chicago in particular had uh, a decrease with a lot of youth events not taking place this year. Uh, so we've seen, you know, uh, we're going to see a lot of uh, fluctuation in, in uh, events, particularly around youth, uh, because of funding, because of access to schools, et cetera. Uh, but certainly, again, a very strong number, uh, despite the fact that we had, uh, you know, more events than we did last year. Uh, we also down a couple of states. So if you remember last year, the big news was just one event in all 50 states, uh, of course, mostly driven by the American Library Association. Uh, this year we, we had uh, only two states that didn't participate, uh, the Dakotas, south and north, not to call them out, but <laughs> just saying that, you know, we – uh, if you know anyone there, let's uh, try to get them on board for next year. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, uh, again, uh, had 48 states, at least one event in 48 states. In addition, we had events in Washington, D.C., as well as the um, U.S. territories, Virgin Islands. So uh, I guess in that sense, we reached 50. But very strong national numbers overall. If we look by state, and again, I know that there are a lot of uh, teams and states that even go a little bit further in detail for your state. So if you're interested in, in looking at some more uh, detail for your state, let us know. Uh, but certainly want to give you some of the high-level numbers that uh, we look at by state. And also keep in mind that this is what we were able to gather. Uh, we know for a fact that not all Money Smart Week events are entered into the system uh, for lots of reasons. Uh, we know that not every attendance number is entered uh, for uh, those events. So uh, this is what we were able to gather from our reports uh, through the database as well as some manual reports that were provided in addition to uh, the database. So we, we try to identify the number of partner organizations that are registered in that state. That doesn't mean that those are the number of partners that participated uh, this year, but that's how many people we have registered in that state. Uh, we have the number of events, of course, for this year, the number of attendees, and number of media hits. Um, and the media hits is uh, separate from the database. Obviously, we're not recording that through the database. Uh, we have a media monitoring service that uh, tries to identify anytime Money Smart Week is mentioned, TV, radio, print. And so whenever uh, those um, mentions are captured by that service, then they sent us a report. So uh, you can see. So uh, again, it, but it's not foolproof. There are plenty of media hits, I'm sure, that don't make it onto that list. Uh, you, many that you may have locally, but this is what we were able to gather from our services. Uh, so you can see um, the first set of states here. This is just alpha order. Um, and I have three slides of states here. But uh, on this first slide, Try to identify in green or blue as just you know events that had significant number of events or uh, attendees, and uh, the blue just signifying that those were the, in the top five. So uh, per usual uh, here in the Midwest, because Money Smart Week has been here the longest, uh, we have very sophisticated and, and uh, a structure in place with lots of planning teams. Obviously, those numbers are, are, are continue to be strong. 
So you can see Illinois continues to lead the pack with about 37,000 attendees and 2,500 events, uh, as well as media hits. Uh, you know that uh, I think the next closest is Michigan, uh, but it's a distant second. And uh, and in Iowa, you can see also very strong with a lot of their youth events, particularly their Ben Franklin uh, visits to schools and Cub Scouts events, et cetera. So coming came in very strong this year in Iowa. Uh, and then the others that uh, again are have significant number of events or attendees that you know attendance uh, topping 1,000. You can see Indiana comes in next with nearly 5,000. Uh, Florida is actually an interesting state because we continue to see a lot of libraries involved in Florida without the benefit of having a planning planning team. Uh, so look at that number of events, only about 100, but yet 2,300 uh, attendees. And, you know, a handful of media hits, and these are individual libraries or library systems, you know, uh, city, county-based library systems that are participating in Money Smart Week uh, in a big way without, again, the, the benefit or structure of a planning team. So Florida uh, definitely has something, uh, something going in terms of their uh, library participation. And then we have uh, California, it's kind of the same deal. Uh, not a lot of, again, significant less uh, number of events, but look at that attendance, uh, really good for California. Uh, but again, mostly individual libraries, financial planners, et cetera. Colorado, we do have the benefit of a planning team there, so very strong uh, for Colorado, mostly in the Denver area. Uh, but, the, but the other things that kind of, you know, I noticed on these uh, charts is, you know, states like Arizona with 264 attendees, Connecticut with 424 attendees, uh, you know, Idaho with 259. You know, so these are, you know, much more than we've seen in years past. So we are starting to see some growth in these states that don't have planning teams or then haven't had much experience with Money Smart Week. So very uh, excited to encourage to see uh, that those states are starting to add more events and more, uh, get, reach more people. So on the second, uh, the middle deck here, again, in the top five, we have Michigan. Uh, with 24,000 in Missouri, with 22,000, um, you know, so uh, across the board, very strong. In Missouri, we have two very strong campaigns. We have the Kansas City campaign, which did report in this year and did not last year, uh, but the, it's a sister campaign, the Kansas City Money Smart uh, Week. Uh, well, actually, it's Money Smart Month in Kansas City. And, uh, you know, they have very strong numbers. St. Louis is also in there, although I think St. Louis was a little underreported this year. Uh, so I may have to update these numbers if I get uh, different numbers from St. Louis later. Um, and then in the other events that had significant amount, of course, uh, well, New Hampshire, it was a, a lot of activity there. A lot of uh, people reached uh, through their libraries. New Mexico um, is an offshoot, really, of the El Paso group. Uh, so the, the El Paso branch of the Dallas Fed has a very strong group. Uh, and they've been participating in Money Smart Week for a number of years. Uh, but the Federal Reserve, uh, as well as FDIC, moved pretty aggressively into New Mexico this year. So you can see how that translated to nearly 200 events and 2,000 attendees. So uh, very strong first-time presence in New Me Mexico uh, for this year. But again, I, I look at some of these other numbers, like Massachusetts with 348, uh, you know, New York with 221. And we're starting to see some of these other states that uh, are starting to get some a decent amount of turnout for their events. And then the last uh, set, or the last third of states, uh, at the very top, what, what, what kind of pops on this one is North Carolina. Uh, Charlotte uh, was a first-time planning team for 2016. Uh, so for them to have that kind of turnout and that kind of um, success was, is really outstanding uh, for a first-time campaign. They did have the benefit of a lot of uh, partners that have participated in other parts of the country that were also there in Charlotte, so uh, some veterans were able to, uh, to lend their knowledge to that, to that planning team. Uh, Detroit served as kind of a, 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 a mentor city, so to speak, uh, to Charlotte because a lot of the Ally Financial in particular, um, you know, was, uh, has a presence in Detroit as well as the headquartered in Charlotte, so uh, they were the, one of the main uh, partners that got something started there, so there was a lot of uh, coordination between Detroit and Charlotte. Um, we see, again, as I mentioned earlier, Texas, uh, that's mostly the El Paso planning team uh, that has done a fantastic job there for years. 
Uh, West Virginia was a uh, top five uh, state. That's why they're blue. Uh, and West Virginia has had a very strong ca campaign for a number of years as well. Um, you know, last year I think they we were underreported in West Virginia, but they came back strong this year and reported their numbers. Um, so, you know, good, good to see back. Wisconsin very strong uh, within the, the Midwest as well. So, uh, you know, but again, you know, I'm looking at Ohio 517, Oregon 214, Rhode Island 630 that does have a small planning team there, uh, Utah 313. So, again, very encouraged to see that there's more and more uh, involvement around the country. So that's a quick look by state. Uh, as I said, if there's any interest in learning more, diving more into detail for any particular state, uh, let us know. We will likely put together these stats um, in some type of presentation format on the new website. We're not sure exactly how that's going to go yet, uh, but uh, th this, pr this uh, presentation for sure will be added to our partner site so that you can take a look at the numbers by state. So total media mentions, I, you know, on the previous slide, again, you can see that last column is how many media mentions we were able to pick up from that state. Again, I, I'm pretty sure it's it's lower than what it actually was, but in total, what we were able to catch is 470 media hits, which is a little lower than last year, but still, again, a very strong number. And just the heat map indicates, and it, if you overlay the number of events, uh, the number of attendees, it, it makes sense where we have some of the more aggressive campaigns that come in a little bit darker blue. So our national partners continue to be strong uh, with American Library Association. 32% uh, of all events took place at libraries. Uh, I think it was up to like 40% last year, but still a very strong number and a large percentage of our events, which represent about 1,700 uh, total events. Um, if I look at the CFP board, which is Certified Financial Planners Board of Standards, as well as uh, skip two down to the FPA, Financial Planning Association, uh, those uh, two groups, have, you know, continue to do a lot of advocacy within their member base uh, to let them know that Money Smart Week is coming up, to uh, hold events um, and that sort of thing. So that, that's where most of that, their engagement and involvement came from. They do put together some events. Uh, but for the most part, they're contacting libraries and, and, and partners on the ground to try to uh, set up a, a smaller events. The CFPB, third from the top, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, and I didn't list it here, but obviously we all know their biggest uh, contribution uh, this year was uh, providing the promotional materials for free to all partners. They printed one million pieces, uh, and that included bookmarks, statement stuffers, flyers, posters, et cetera. So uh, we were very, very grateful for their partnership and sponsorship of those materials. I'll talk about this a little bit more, but as a reminder, last year we decided with our new strategic plan, given the fact that we keep growing and our resources do not, uh, that we need, either needed to identify these kind of sponsorships uh, and or start moving our resources away from print, which is very costly, into more technology, which we are doing. Uh, but to have CFPB come on board this year and print that many pieces for us was, um, was uh, you know, outstanding. And I think the partners obviously all benefited from that because you were able to order your materials just as you were uh, in previous years. You were able to order it online. Now, we did have some complications with the, uh, the late ordering. Just there's some, some orders came in late and that sort of thing, but we are working with CFPB this year to make sure that we get these um, items printed early and, and shipped early so we don't have some of that. Um, in 2017. But again, certainly a huge support system uh, and great partnership for Money Smart Week. And they've already committed for 2017, so we're very excited about that. Uh, we are going to change up the pieces a little bit, make them a little bit more co branded between Money Smart and CFPB, but uh, certainly uh, very grateful for that partnership. USDA Cooper uh, Cooperative Extension uh, were involved in 215 events. They did have a a national coordinator this year that held webinars to reach out to educators across the country uh, to get them engaged and get them involved. So they are taking steps to be more involved in Money Smart Week as well. So let's take a quick look at the website traffic. I know we've been looking at this uh, for several years, and I'm hoping that these numbers continue to go up as we uh, offer a new product in the fall, a new website, new database. Uh, but certainly if we look at the, the, the overall numbers, uh, these are the most common numbers you look at for a website. 
in terms of traffic and uh, where people are coming from, but you can see we're pulling this data from February 1 to May 31, which obviously is past Money Smart Week, but lots of people are still coming to the site um, for resources or if they missed something. But we were at 61,000 sessions. And just a reminder, a session means that someone came to the website and spent some time there. That's all that means. Uh, so 61,000 times someone came to the website. And, and, and also keep in mind that this is strictly for the consumer website. If you recall, we had uh, consumer and partners on one website uh, before. And, of course, partners are coming to the website all the time. So we, we, that was kind of messing with our numbers. But now this, this is just strictly consumer's uh, website. So of those 61,000 sessions, 45,000 uh, were unique. Um, so you know that that makes sense since we are a campaign and lots of people are accessing it for the account events. Um, and the balance, of course, just means that people came back and revisited for various reasons. And we had about 150,000 page views uh, during that time span, which all of these numbers are up. The 61,000 sessions is up 15,000 sessions from last year. So. Again, more more people right, than we've had in the past. Are okay. So this is looking at uh, once they got there, you know, how long did they spend on the website? So the 2.4 uh, pages per session. That's just your average of about two and a half pages. Uh, were was the average of what people looked at on the site, and they stayed on for an average of a little over two minutes which doesn't sound like long, but I'll explain why those numbers might be a little low. <clears throat> and then the other number that, you know, is the bounce rate, which is 54%. And what does bounce rate mean? Bounce rate means that they've come to the website and they immediately leave. So um, they don't click on anything else on the website. They come to the homepage and for whatever reason they, you know, close it out or, uh, you know, leave the website. So that sounds kind of high. I know like more than half of the people coming to the website are leaving the website without looking at anything. Uh, that sounds bad and it doesn't make me feel good, but uh, when I look at uh, industry standards and uh, I get you know feedback from experts, you know they tell me that this is not bad, this is pretty average. Um, so uh, when you get into the 70% range is when it, it could be alarming uh, if 70% if of people come to your site leave right away. But 54, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing is good. 30% is, is really good. Um, so um, that's where we kind of, we want to start trending towards 30% or, or at least uh, try to, you know, go closer to that. But certainly 54% is what I'm, what I'm told is, is, not, is not bad. It's pretty average. Okay, so website geography, where are people coming from when they web visit the website? Um, you can see here, you know, the top 10. And again, if you look at the previous stats where we showed the number of events, uh, the number of partners, the number of media hits, uh, attendees, obviously this, you know, you, these, these make sense. Um, all the same similar states are in the top 10 range. The ones here that were pretty surprising, uh, Texas was the first time they, they crept into the top 10 and went all the way up to three. So uh, Texas was really, um, doing a great job, and, and especially, again, the El Paso campaign in, in getting a lot of local involvement there. I think another one to crack the top 10 this year for the first time was California. Uh, Missouri, I think, was there last year as well because of their stronghold in St. Louis. Um, and in Florida, they may have been in the top 10 as well. But, again, that's, that's such a – I'm always intrigued by Florida because they don't have any kind of planning team there. Uh, well, California doesn't either, but California and Florida – uh, pretty amazing that they are in the top 10 without any planning team. Uh, all the rest of the states there do have at least one planning team. Uh, but again, just give you a sense of where people are coming from. Um, technology, so what are people using to access the website? The majority of people are using desktop, which was the case the past several years. Uh, but the interesting thing about this year is that mobile doubled. So mobile was about 15% last year. Uh, and now 32, almost 33%. Uh, so that is in line with what everyone is saying, is that more people are using mobile devices to access, um, you know, the Internet. And certainly that holds true for us as well. Um, still, what desktop is king, but uh, we uh, should be mindful of this shift where people are using mobile phones more and more. 
uh, for their internet activity, which is another reason why we're very excited about the new website because the current website, uh, particularly the database, once you go into the database, uh, it is uh, not responsive and is not very mobile friendly, meaning it doesn't resize for their, the size of their screen. So, uh, so we're very excited about the new site having that, that technology um, and flexibility for mobile phones. Um, and the other thing I, I guess I, I, I meant to explain earlier and I didn't mention, when we looked at the average pages viewed and the average time people spent on the website, which if you remember was two and a half pages and about two minutes uh, in the average time they spent on our website. The reason why that's a little bit lower is because once people do go into the database, which is a custom built tool, uh, that is actually housed on ChicagoFed.org, we no longer are able to track users. So that greatly impacts the number of pages and the amount of time that we are able to track. Uh, so uh, though that two and a half pages and two minutes, I'm guessing is, is you know, maybe half of what the average person is, is actually using, this, or using on the site because the majority of the browsing and time to, you know, is on the calendar of events uh, you know, in that database when you're looking for events to, to attend. Uh, so we are losing uh, some valuable page views and some valuable time because once they go into that application, we lose that. With the new website, that will not be the case. With the new website, uh, the, the application, the database is built into the website and we'll be able to track their activity on the site the entire time. So that will look, hopefully, I'm, I'm you know, I'm hoping that next year those numbers are at least double. But don't hold me to it. <laughs> uh, so website acquisition, what does that mean? So when people do come to the website, uh, how are they getting there? Um, so number one is direct. And what, that means that they are actually typing in Money Smart Week into the URL. So what that tells me is that people are seeing it, they're hearing it, and they're remembering it. That's a good thing, right? So we have, we're starting to build that enough recognition for people to go back to their computer or to their phone and actually type that in uh, right into the, to their uh, browser URL and, uh, and, and get, go directly to Money Smart Week. Uh, organic means uh, through searches. So Google, um, if you search for Money Smart or Money Smart Week or financial education, uh, you know, any money classes, anything like that, wherever Money Smart Week pops up uh, and they click on it through that search engine, that's organic. Uh, so, again, what that tells me is that we are popping up on those search engines. And I know that there's, a, a, you know, a science to search engine optimization, and we are looking to try to be a little bit more, be better at that and trying to make sure that our Money Smart Week does appear at the top of those lists and top of those searches. Um, but, but certainly um, the fact that it comes in at number two means that Money Smart Week is coming, you know, it is displaying and it is, um, you know, we, we are having a good uh, place on that search engine um, when, when people search for Money Smart. So social is simply social. Um, you know, anytime there's a link on any kind of social post or uh, a tweet or what, what have you, uh, that's what that means. Referral simply is if you have a web link on, on another website. So all of you have partners, I'm sure, are linking to Money Smart Week in some capacity from your websites. And if they click on it through that uh, third-party website, that's what referral means. And email is simply, you know, a link in an email. Uh, display, I, I, I'm not sure exactly what that is. I need to uh, find out from our, um, our tech guys. I thought it was display ads, advertising. But, uh, and it may still be, but if that's my best guess, uh, I'd have to get back to you next year to tell you what exactly that is, but it's very low anyway. Okay, so some of the things, uh, social media, we are up to nearly 40,000 likes, which is great. I think several years ago we were like at 2,000, so uh, that's been the result of, I think, some better, uh, a better strategy with social media as well as some advertising that we've done through social media. Um, but... I think, you know, we've done a great job. And when I say social, I mostly mean Facebook because we don't really have much of a Twitter presence right now. 
Um, and we did play with Periscope here and there, but really didn't leverage it very much for this year, maybe next year. But it's really Facebook where we have the big this, uh, this presence and are using the most effectively. Um, and, you know, this, you know, lots of different types of posts we're putting out there now. If I start from the top left and go clockwise, you know, top left we're looking at, you know, during the week we're trying to post as many uh, highlights of the week as possible. Uh, you know, the scavenger hunt, we're trying to incorporate more app-based learning and games and that sort of thing to engage uh, all kinds of age levels. Uh, we're looking at professional photography and some little bit more streamlined look to Money Small Week in the upper right. Um, and then, you know, also trying to, you know, capitalize on, on memes and, you know, the more uh, casual nature of Facebook. So you can see where, you know, we're trying to, again, use some popular images and memes that circulate around social media uh, and, and um, you know, adapt them to Money Smart Week. We try to put as much new content and our own content out there during the campaign. Uh, even right now, we are uh, putting out mostly shared content, but during and leading up to the campaign, we try to put out as much original content as possible. So in the bottom center, you know, that's one of our partners you know, talking about, I, I believe, was identity theft, you know. So, you know, those were our money minutes, uh, which all went over pretty well. And, you know, we want to continue doing more of that on social. We are tapping into the resource that is the partners. We have lots of experts that can uh, talk uh, directly to consumers via video. And so we want to do much more of that, even if it's just short clips of two or three minutes, which is mostly the attention span, uh, attention span these days. But I certainly want to try to capitalize on that a little bit more and even more, you know, longer format pieces on the website. And then uh, lower left, you know, again, just trying to capitalize on the um, – the social part of social media and getting people to engage with us. Uh, that that uh, screenshot of a little uh, campaign we ran through Twitter where we wanted people to share with us how they're saving money or what they're saving for, savings equals, and uh, we just randomly selected someone for a gift card. So again, incentive and something fun and engaging. Um, our annual report is going to show a lot of which will be up on the website either later this week or next week the latest. Uh, but our annual report, um, just like in previous years, is going to highlight, uh, you know, some of the best of the best in terms of events and programs, uh, advertising and promotion. And, of course, it's a mix of that as well as what we were able to <laughs> acquire. Uh, you know, we do ask all partners to submit their best practices and their highlights and their photos. And I know there's a ton of stuff out there that we never even get uh, but uh, but certainly whatever was submitted to us, we, we, we selected the best and, and put it into the annual report. Uh, and as, as last year, we'll have the same sections, the same look. Um, so I, I encourage you to take a look. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff in there. I'll give you some ideas for next year. We are looking to do a little bit more packaging for these type of best practices and ideas. More to come on that, but, but certainly uh, you can get some, some base level information at, through the annual report. A few that come to mind would just be like the uh, Money Smart Kids Read program that we have in several Midwest uh, states. Uh, we have the, which started in El Paso and then moved on to now Michigan where we have a 5K run, uh, which they call Run for the Money. Uh, so, you know, trying to get uh, to link um, financial fitness with um, physical fitness and you know, trying to get people to come around, uh, you know, do something a little bit more, you know, do something different and more interesting for Money Smart. Uh, so lots of things like that are in there. Um, so, again, I encourage you to take a look. And uh, what I started to say is we are looking to try to package up some of those best practices so that they're more ter turnkey programs so that uh, in future years you can see what other teams have done, uh, all of these steps they had to take in order to put something like that together, and simply just uh, roll that out uh, locally if you have the resources and ability to do so. We are even looking at perhaps looking at some national sponsors for these types of activities so that uh, you know, that eliminates the need to find a local sponsor. But anyhow, uh, more to come on that uh, later as well as uh, later this year. But uh, the annual report will be out and ready in the next week or so. So our consumer surveys, um, we had about 6,000 that we received from across the country. You can see the top dozen states listed here. 
So when we look at the surveys, let's keep in mind where they're coming from. Let's also keep in mind that they're not scientific. Uh, so this just kind of gives us an idea. Uh, but I, I know I say this every year, but certainly, you know, what we're going to see, especially around the demographics, uh, again, are particular to these states and regions, um, and they're also very particular, uh, or they, uh, you know, represent the demographics and the makeup of people who filled out surveys. Uh, and I say that because that could be very different from the actual composition of people coming to the events, um, you know, and with, it, with this not being scientific. So there's lots of studies that show that certain demographics are more likely to fill out surveys, and I think that plays out in our demographics from year, year to year. Uh, but we also get lots of anecdotal feedback that, from partners that it, sound, it looks pretty accurate to what they're seeing in their events, so it might be a combination of the two. But any, at any rate, it gives us an idea, so let's just you know, consider those factors when we're looking at these stats. And again, because this is mostly from a handful of states, um, you know, Maybe it's not as helpful, but I did want to share with you what we did receive. Uh, so when we look at gender breakdown, we're looking at, uh, you know, the, we always see a 60, 40, 70, 30 every year, every state. So this is pretty typical. Uh, but again, I always get that feedback from partners saying, yeah, that's, that's about right. Um, age skews a little older. Uh, and that's always been true. So again, uh, we have to consider the demographics of people that fill out surveys, uh, but certainly we're looking at, you know, 50 to 65 and over 65 being, you know, um, over 50% of, of uh, the surveys that we received. Ethnicity, again, this is so specific in, in, uh, to, to, to region, and, and this, this is very local, so I, don't, I can't take a lot from this looking at a national perspective. Uh, but, uh, you know, certainly when you look at different regions of the country, different cities, different states, this is obviously going to be very different from state to state. So uh, I don't know if a dozen states really gives me an accurate picture, <laughs> but, uh, you know, this is the way it breaks down when we take those surveys that we did receive. Um, with about 19% African American and 6% uh, Hispanic, 6% Asian. So uh, again, you know, this tells us maybe there's some work to do in those areas, but again, uh, this is helpful at the local level when we look at surveys. Education, um, same deal here. We always see a higher skew of folks that have some education or have completed a degree or graduate degree. Um, you know, if you, if you put those together, that's like 85, 80, no, not even that. Um, let's see. 80, almost 90% of the folks are, are saying that they've had some college at least. And so um, that's very telling. Uh, and again, I don't know if that means that we just, uh, you know, are, are not reaching out to as many diverse demographics as we can. Uh, I don't know if it means that um, people with more education are more likely to fill out surveys, you know, again, but that's what we, we see year to year. Now these, these next few slides, we can take a lot from, and I do take these to heart because regardless of what state you're in or um, your, your demographics, you know, you're going to tell us if you like the session or not. Um, we know that people usually fill out surveys if they really liked it or they really didn't like it. Uh, but the fact that we have people who say they didn't like it, it is very low, that's, that says a lot. Um, and so, again, it says a lot to the programs and the, le the level of content, the quality of the content that is being put out there by all of you as partners. So, uh, you know, you can you know, look at these, you know, 41% said valuable, 56% said very valuable. Um, so we see that year to year. And, again, it just says a lot about our partners, how likely are they applied their learnings, you know, 94% collectively between likely and very likely. Uh, very strong confirmation that our programs are having an impact on people, uh, how likely are they to recommend, right? So 95% saying, yes, I would recommend this to a family or friend. So these, again, I know that they also can be looked at as, as good PR numbers or good PR stats, but certainly just, you know, makes us feel like uh, that the right organizations are involved in providing the right amount of content. So this one usually is another um, slide or, or statistic that works better at the local level. 
but certainly it does give us a lot of insight as to what worked or what didn't work in terms of promotion. Uh, and again, I know that looking at a dozen states like this doesn't really give us a, a real good local picture. Uh, and, but I will say this, I will say by looking, having seen some of the local breakdowns, the uh, word of mouth, or I'm sorry, the other category, which is the highest at 27% at the far right, and two to, 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 uh, to the left there at 21% is family, friend, teacher. So that's kind of word of mouth. 27% uh, is really word of mouth. The, the other is really word of mouth. When we ask them to specify what that means, the write-ins are always family, friend, teacher, et cetera. Uh, so whatever reason, they skip over that one category that we, we try to be more specific uh, so that they can check it. But, you know, but that's always the case. We always, it is a very much a grassroots campaign, and so we don't have a big advertising budget behind these uh, these uh, planning teams or these cities or these states that are putting together events for Money Smart, uh, even at the national level, of course. So that makes sense. Uh, word of mouth is always your best marketing, but certainly for us, uh, it's critical to, to getting people to come out. Now, having said that, we look at some more traditional media and keep in mind that the majority of these surveys came from both the cities of Chicago and Detroit. In the cities of Chicago and Detroit, we have sponsors that do newspaper inserts uh, that are essentially the calendar of events. So this is, you know, skewing this data a little bit, but it, it was pretty impactful. And so when you look at that as a best practice, it really worked. So when you look at Chicago and you look at Detroit, the fact that they're able to work with a local newspaper to distribute calendars and people are responding to that and they're saying they heard about Money Smart because they got a calendar, Again, I know we're trying to get out of the printing business, but it's, it's also a very useful tool. And if you're able to, to uh, get some local sponsors and link up with a local newspaper, it's very effective. So you can see, and why I'm saying that is if you look at the first uh, column, 17% event calendar booklets, and then a few over at 19%, which is newspaper, which again, could be advertisements, but it's you. But what we saw from Chicago and Detroit, we're guessing it's mostly from the fact that they distribute calendar booklets through the newspaper. Uh, so that's a very strong number. And again, I just, I just say that because, you know, this is very specific to those two cities, but it is a best practice. And if you're able to uh, incorporate that locally, I highly recommend it. It does take some coordination. Uh, it does involve, you know, some sponsors, uh, but, but certainly uh, we've seen those two cities do it very effectively. Uh, have you ever visited Money Smart Week? 82% said no. Um, that sounds bad, um, and we want to get that number lower. It's better than last year. I think last year was like 90%. Uh, so the fact that we're moving in the right direction is good, and the fact that we're going to have a better website next year is, is also good news. But again, when we look at this, the previous slide just told me that the, a lot of people heard about Money Smart Week through a printed piece, a calendar, a newspaper um, that had the, the calendar listings. So it makes sense that they're less likely to use the website if they have all the events at their fingertips. Uh, when we look at the age demographics, it skews much higher, so it's, it makes sense that they're less likely to go to the website. So when you kind of piece these things together, they kind of make sense. But uh, but certainly we want to try to get more surveys in so that we have a more accurate picture, right? So I, I also say that, you know, going forward, I think it's important that we try to incorporate more surveys and, and get you know, people encouraged to, to, to fill them out. And I have a, maybe a potential solution for that. But uh, this is kind of our, what we got uh, from uh, surveys. So take it for what it's worth. Again, lots of caveats in here, but, uh, but this is what we were able to capture. So, in the last part of the presentation, um, just talking, just want to remind everyone about, you know, again, last year when we rolled out our strategic plan, uh, that we were going to start shifting resources uh, to a national level, uh, and we started to do that uh, by providing more resources to all partners as opposed to more, you know, just in the, in the Midwest, uh, through planning team incubators, through, you know, content and resources and programs that I had mentioned earlier, um, but we also are looking to invest into technology. Um, so just a kind of a quick reminder as to what our, uh, you know, highlights of that strategic plan 
we're all about, and we are well on our way in doing all of those things. So looking forward, again, those national consultants. We are uh, about to hire in a national consultant to help with our national partners, not only the current ones, but develop new ones and to try to strengthen that national presence, um, as well as you know, bringing some national sponsors to Money Smart. We are looking for another consultant to help, as I mentioned earlier, to develop some turnkey programs, you know, some kits that you can use that, you know, hopefully have some sponsors attached to them so that you can run some of these best practices programs locally uh, by following the playbook and just, you know, linking up with the national sponsor. Uh, we are in the process of building a new website and database, um, which I'll talk about here in a second. Uh, and at the same time, we decided to take this as an opportunity to rebrand Money Smart. I think I said this earlier, but CFPB, the promo materials are already uh, approved for next year. So we are not approved, but they've agreed to, to do them. So we're, we're in the stages of, of putting those together. Um, chair and partner list will be updated on the annual report. But I say this for chairs, if there's any chairs on the call, if there are any changes to uh, the planning teams, if you have a co-chair, if a new chair, uh, please email us as soon as we can so that we can update our records and make sure that the chairs get the invites to the chair webinars to get you, get you started in September. Um, Money Smart Week, if, if you don't know already, is April 22 to 29. So that is, it's going to be the same week, uh, the last full week in April. And our national kickoff event, which is uh, coupled with the Visa Financial Literacy Summit, is scheduled for April 12. So we kind of use that as our flagship launch for Money Smart. Uh, and all of you are, are invited to view it online um, as it's broadcast live or attend in person, but we will be sending out information when we get closer. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, one of the things when we were looking at the website and building a new website and trying to be a little bit more contemporary and a little fresh and hip with our look for the website, we thought maybe Ben means a little bit of a facelift. Uh, we then thought that perhaps uh, we could go with a completely new logo and complete rebrand. Uh, so we did ask our design firm to uh, give us some, some new looks. Uh, we weren't happy with a completely redesign. Uh, so we, we uh, wanted to try to keep some of the branding. Uh, we, if you Google Money Smart Week and you click on images, you see that there's clearly a brand that we've established over the last decade plus. And so we didn't want to stray too far away from our brand uh, as to uh, have to reinvent and reintroduce Money Smart Week to everyone. So uh, but what we did do, then we went back to them and said, okay, how about you refresh what we have? How about you make it a little bit more contemporary and something that, you know, young people might identify with a little bit better or be a little bit more visually appealing? So um, we did uh, do that with uh, this next set of graphics. Uh, we are trying to freshen up the colors a little bit, a little bit more contemporary. So that we have like kind of the blue green in the top right, but then we have a more traditional blue as well uh, that we're trying to incorporate there. We took a lot of the uh, structure to the web, to the logo away. We tried to, to clean it up and make it a little bit more simple. Uh, so if you see like uh, the old logo, we have all these bars and all, this, all these graphics and images around Ben, but we decided to, and we obviously we updated the font to be a little bit more contemporary as well. So um, we're really excited about the new look that you are. Uh, we, don't, we are going to officially roll this out in the fall, so we don't have anything available for you now. These are just some, uh, some early final uh, mock-ups, but certainly going to be incorporated into the new website. So uh, again, just trying to, to clean it up a little bit and make it a little bit more visually appealing uh, for a contemporary audience. So I think we accomplished that. Uh, look forward to any feedback. but. Uh, but certainly, we, we feel good about the way we're headed. Uh, and that is going to lead into our website design. So um, this is just a, a mock-up. So this is not, you know, none of these images are fine or anything. But certainly, just a quick little look at the header of our new website, um, which is going to incorporate the new logo, the new colors. And, you know, we're going to go with this dominant image at the top, because most contemporary websites are doing that with video or a dominant image. Uh, we have a very simple uh, navigation at the top. So you can see at the top we have about, we have events, we have learn and partners. Uh, about is going to be all the reports. It's going to be the history and mission, the partner list, all of that. Uh, the events, of course, is going to take you right to the, 
um, page where you can find events. Learn is going to replace resources. So we thought Learn was a little bit more intuitive. And so Learn uh, will be all of the Money Smart Kids stuff, uh, all of the resources, the, the money minutes, uh, webinars we want to put in there, we want to start a blog. All that stuff will be available to consumers all year round. And so we want to really kind of you know beef that up as well. Um, and then partners will be all of your materials, your partner kits, your media kits, your uh, all, all the webinars that we record, all of that will be housed under the partner tab. The nice thing about these is they are dynamic, so when you scroll over those um, those navigation units at the top, it does expand to a larger menu, and you can see all the different pages, which there will be several, uh, underneath those, so it expands out. It's not dynamic here on the screen, but uh, you'll see when you scroll over it, it'll, it'll show you all the sub-pages, which is nice. Um, we also are going to this box format, so you can see there's the dominant image at the top, dominant box, and then you have the you know about Money Smart Week in the lower left, and you have fine events uh, in the lower right, and even below that we have like a section for youth and a section for uh, you know learn or what what have you. And the nice thing about this, and we see a lot of websites doing this now because they want to be responsive and they want to be mobile friendly. So when you look at it on a desktop, it'll be look like this, but when you go to a mobile phone. These, all these boxes just stack one on top of the other uh, and makes it for a nice uh, um, way to scroll uh, you know, through the website and all the different pieces of that home page. So we're, again, we're very excited about the new look. We're very excited about um, you know, the new technology that we're going to build in this because in addition to the website, as I mentioned, is also going to be a new database. The data, I know we've said that. Um, Several times already, and you know, we were thinking about rolling it out last year, but we wanted to take our time, and I'm glad we did. Uh, we will have lots of new training videos and webinars that are going to be coming out in the next couple of months. We will keep you posted. Uh, we don't anticipate that you're going to have to re-register. You may have to reset your password and maybe add a couple of additional fields because we're going to add fields to the registration form, so you may have to complete your profile, uh, but it's not going to be a complete re-registration. Um, but there's going to be so many more new features to the new database that we're very excited about. Just a couple that come to mind. Uh, when you log in to your account, you will not have to scroll through thousands of events. You will be able to just see the events that are tied to your account. Um, chair people and national people will have a broader look so that you can pull from different parts of the country. Um, we will have the ability to, consumers will have the ability to RSVP through the tool. So when they search for events and they find an event, they can just click on RSVP right then and there. Uh, and, they, and then so you as a partner will be able to see how many people are RSVPing to your event. Uh, they will get automatic email reminders uh, when the event is coming up. We will have the ability to email them after the event and survey them. So and that's what I was talking about earlier. Perhaps we go completely electronic uh, at some point, maybe even as soon as next year, uh, where we can just send email um, surveys to people. Now, I don't know how effective that is, and I don't know if people actually fill them out, but if we, if we make it simple and it goes directly to their phone and it's a short little survey, maybe we will get some, uh, you know, some, some better results than what we're getting with the paper surveys. Uh, because I know it's kind of a pain to print those out and hand them out in advance and all of that. So if we can kind of do that all through the website, I think that will benefit and, uh, and we'll get more better uh, quality feedback. Um, I think those are a few of the highlights. Uh, but certainly, you know, we're just excited about uh, all the new technology and the new look and the direction that Money Smart Week is headed. So with that, uh, I know I went a little long, but uh, I'll wrap up my comments. And I know that Shayla's been busy answering questions, but um, I will go ahead and unmute and so that we can get on discussion. And if anyone has a burning question or comment, uh, please plus press star six and unmute yourself, uh, and you can ask. The conference is now in talk mode. So again, just press star six if you have a question and unmute yourself. Hello, Alejo. Yes. Hi, this is George uh, Ovalle with, uh, from the Bloomington, Illinois area. Sure. Uh, you had mentioned uh, there would be training videos on the website, Money Smart Week website. Is that for, are you going to be doing like Money Smart Week lessons or what do you mean training videos? Uh, good question. I, I mostly mean uh, videos to train partners on how to use the new database. 
Okay. Uh, when you enter events, when you edit events, when you add your attendance, um, okay. all of that. And then, of course, just some basic navigation show you where it's going to be, uh, the resources are going to be there. Uh, but but you bring up a good point because one thing we want to do in the future or even as, as early as this fall is, is launch some additional resources for consumers. So we are looking at doing a monthly webinar series, doing a blog, uh, trying to yeah, that show, sounds great. Show, yeah, showcase more resources and, and, and things that our partners are offering uh, so that it can be more of an annual resource for consumers. Uh, so we, we, it's going to be slow to build that, but we are looking to do more of that. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions from on the phone? I see a question here in the chat about uh, getting more academic libraries involved. Um, the and American Library Association has been uh, trying to do that with universities and schools. Um, so uh, I would probably defer to them as to how that's going, but I know that there are more schools, uh, libra school libraries participating and signing up. I do see that. We get a weekly report to see uh, what, when the, what organizations are signing up. Most of them are libraries, and I see many more now that are coming from schools. So, um, but I would imagine that there's an ongoing effort to do more with it through the ELA. Any other questions? Okay, good. Well, I'll wrap up the phone. We'll be on the chat uh, for a little while longer, but um, again, just want to thank you so much for your time. Hopefully this was helpful. You kind of get a national look. If you want some more detail in your state, please uh, reach out to us and we'll try to get you some more detail. Uh, but look, be on the lookout for our new uh, training and as we launch the 25th campaign, uh, we'll have a whole series of new webinars and instructional uh, uh, videos for all of you. So thank you so much, and we'll be in touch in the next couple of months.